Hey everyone, Brian Beeler, Kevin O'Brien coming to you from the Storage Review Lab and today we're looking at something kind of interesting. Uh, we don't often get a lot of time to look at more of the accessory type world, but this one stood out when we had the opportunity. And this is the Sonic Fusion Dual U.2 SSD card. What's going on here? So it's a um, by 16 full height, full length card uh, okay. that holds two NVMe devices. And not just M.2, but it holds the U.2 Enterprise form factor drives, which for the clientele that uh, Sonnet has, they're going after the hardcore video editors, guys that need something that you can literally hammer all day long and the drives are made for it versus right. consumer devices that may kind of reach in that realm but I mean these guys are made for it and heck you could put like full uh, full size Optane devices on it if you want. Yeah and we've seen a lot of gear coming through lately from Sonnet and the stuff's built really nice. Oh yeah. So it's really designed for the creative pros that want more out of their workstations and speaking of workstations this works within Macs and PCs or even a server I suppose. It is highly compatible. Right and um, when we're looking at the build so like you said two uh, two and a half inch U.2, so that's important. These are NVMe drives. If you want a SATA connected card, they have that also, but this you know, w will not support SATA or SAS. Um, so we're using the Micron 9300s on this guy, and it's got a PCIe bridge that that uh, connects the drives, presents them to the uh, to the file system. No RAID on board with this one. Some of their products do have. A uh, little hardware RAID chip. This one, no RAID, right? Yeah, most uh, on NVMe, you generally want to deal with soft RAID or just a JBOT presentation. Right. Uh, and you generally get the highest performance that way as well. And we'll uh, flip this over real quick too, but the drives just screw into the bottom. I notice you were using the two screw method. Yes. <laughs> Nothing but the finest. Maybe use four <laughs> screws each in a production setting. Finest or fastest in our lab. And then uh, what do we have going on here? This is a little piece that comes off if you need the room. Yeah, it will. So in a uh, desktop, they're generally built as a deeper chassis. In a server, you're, there's no extra space. So uh, to fit a full height, uh, full length uh, card, if your server supports it, right. uh, you have to take off this guy. And I'm not entirely sure what purpose that serves. Because I know. I know we've been debating this. What the purpose of this is, and I think it's quite obvious when you think about it. It's for aerodynamics. This will yes. reduce the front drag <laughs> on your card by, I don't know how they measure drag in, in aeronautical terms, but when this is attached with the screws, just look at look at this. It's just going through the air so much more efficiently than Slipstream if you take it off. has been improved. Yes, absolutely. Let's take a look at the, uh, the performance though. So we, we hit on some of these key specs already, 32 terabytes, that's just a math problem of two 16 terabyte drives. Put and they together. are sold separately. The drives? Yes, that's a key point because even though this is, I mean, it's not a, it's actually a very affordable card. The enterprise drives, depending on what you select, and if you go up to the 32 gig, or 32 terabytes yes. of storage capacity, you'll be spending a pretty penny on that. Uh, but that pretty penny gets you RAID 0 speeds of up to 6250 megabytes per second, which is pretty robust. We talked a little bit about RAID support 0 or 1 at the OS level. Um, bootable Thunderbolt. Now, I suppose you could do this, throw it in a Thunderbolt um, JBOD guy and run a cable over to your system. Oh, yeah. And if you're a mobile um, platform type of oriented person, that might be what you're after because you're not... There, I, I think there's one other solution that mounts a uh, U.2 Enterprise drive into an external enclosure, but you might need to go to that realm if you're going to be hammering the drive as much as uh, this type of person would. Well, for a video editor or somebody like that, having that in the mobile rig, you're going to eat it, though, on the performance side, but you gain portability, right? Yeah. Uh, NVMe compliant, and then all of your, your smart reporting tools. And before we jump into the benchmarks, what did you do from a testing standpoint with this? What did we test with? And so this we put into our uh, Dell RSM40XD server, uh, and we were uh, leveraging a, a boot with, tool. Without the drag reduction system? Yes. Okay. We may have lost a couple of frames per second in our game. Yeah, IOPS yeah. are down at least 8% because of the no DRS on that thing. Yeah. 
But uh, we're using Ubuntu, and uh, for our uh, VD bench tests, we tested both drives individually together in aggregate, so JPOD presentation. Mm -hmm. And then for Houdini, we did a uh, RAID 0. Okay, so let's take a look at what you found here. Just some of the key highlights you've pulled out for us. So in our uh, peak sequential uh, retest, we actually exceeded the uh, uh, benchmarking claim. So overall, a lot of this is going to come down to where the theoretical max of uh, PCI 3.0 is going to come out to. And obviously, if your drives are slower than where that come out to, this could have some variability. But in our case, we're using some pretty stout drives. Right. Okay. Uh, sequential write. Uh, and this is our enterprise-focused test. Where we're testing a 25% um, partition size on each drive. So it's not a burst-oriented drive, uh, burst-oriented test. And that area for sustain, we came out around uh, 2250 uh, megabytes per second. Okay. Um, on the uh, random read side, uh, just under 1.4 million IOPS sustained, which it's pr it's pretty good. Uh, and then random write uh, sustained just under 400,000 IOPS. Okay, so good performance profile with with these drives that are you know, pretty good as well. There are faster drives that would maybe push you a little closer to the limit of what you can get out of the interface? Yeah, on sequential, you're not going to see higher, but uh, there are some areas where you'd be seeing higher um, uh, write throughput. For example, uh, they show, I believe, the um, uh, some Intel Optane drives installed sure. in their sample photos. So depending on how you um, what drives you select, there are going to be some options to get higher performance profiles. And for people thinking about, well, why would I need the enterprise drives? Really, it's more from a sustained performance perspective, right? Because if we look at the profile of a consumer client SSD, it'll burst really high, but an hour in, and it's kind of oof, down in a trough, or yeah. maybe even sooner. Yeah, a lot of those guys, it's not just the, uh, some of it is the endurance where they're hammering out and a particular project finishes and it's on to the next one, it's on to the next one, and you want to make sure that you have guaranteed performance levels that you're just not going to find from a client uh, type device. Right. So for the professionals, they're looking for something like this. We ran this by our uh, our video guy, and Vince says that it is uh, stout and fast AF. I think were yes. was his yes. his terminology uh, storage for your your workstation, editing rig, whatever it is. Um, you know, I I got to give it to Sonnet. We haven't seen a lot of their stuff in here before because we just frankly haven't been paying as much attention as maybe we should have to some of these. Creative Pro products, but this thing is is pretty sweet and uh, may not uh, make it back out of the lab. This might be one of those checks in and never goes home. It got lost. Yeah, right. It's not here. It's not here. Anyway, thanks for tuning in to, uh, to the video review. We'll be back soon with another one.